Now, Muratu had hundreds of thousands of followers on Facebook, and he used his pages to wreak havoc, including spreading false accusations that a Muslim business owner had raped a Buddhist employee, a post that helped instigate riots in the city of Mandalay in 2014, in which two people were killed and around 20 others injured. And yet, despite repeated warnings about Muratu, Facebook didn't get around to banning him until earlier this year. And that is just one example of the extent to which Facebook became an echo chamber of Islamophobia. One local official told reporters he was proud to oversee a Muslim free village, even though he admitted he had never even met a Muslim before, adding, I have to thank Facebook because it is giving me the true information in Myanmar. And here is what happened when ABC talked to people in the streets there. Most local people here get their news via Facebook. And judging by what people have told us, they are not getting the whole picture. What do you think about the Rohingya people? I think they are terrorists. They are excellent. They are making problems everywhere. I could gather information from Facebook. What does Facebook say about them? They want to occupy our land and our people. That is very, very dangerous. Because no one should be judged by the worst things people say about them on Facebook. If I were judged by that, you'd think I was a cuck twit, a prime example of why abortion should be more readily available, and that I look like a distressed bird in a pet shop trying desperately to get your attention. And I ask you, is any of that, apart from that last one, really fair? I would say no. I would argue no. So, so how the fuck did so much hate speech and violence inciting content stay up for so long? Because it's not like Facebook doesn't have rules. They have a lot of them. Their own internal materials get into details like which sort of anuses photoshopped onto faces they're willing to allow. This is true. They even cite graphic examples such as this image of Trump with an anus for a mouth. That is apparently allowed, by the way, because he is a public figure. Taylor Swift with anuses for eyes, also allowed for the same reason. But this image of Kim Jong-un with an anus for a mouth is apparently not okay because, I quote, it also displays a sex toy inserted into the anus. But that still leaves grey areas, doesn't it? For instance, what if I display a meatball sub being inserted into that same mouth anus? Is a meatball sub a sex toy? Could you not argue that meatballs are the anal beads of Italy? And, by the way, Olive Garden, that slogan is free for you to use. And look, you can have it. It's yours. And look. You can quibble, you can absolutely quibble with where Facebook draws its lines. And the broader discussion of private companies policing speech is an important one. But the point is, Facebook does have standards that are enforced in a number of ways. They have uh, artificial intelligence that automatically detects some objectionable content and removes it. And they also rely on users like you and me to flag objectionable content, which is then reviewed by human moderators. It's something most social media companies do, and it is a thankless job, as you can see from this training session run by a content moderation company in India. Here, the person is not naked, but you can see the erection. Shape is visible. Now this lady. Now here, it's very much obvious that intensely she is focusing on butt part. The camera is focusing on butt part. It will fall under nudity. It's not proper nudity, but it will fall under nudity. Okay. I'm sorry, but I'm absolutely calling it. That guy is definitely focusing on the butt part. And look, but, but look, as Facebook themselves will tell you, Policing nudity is the easy part. What's harder is defining and spotting misinformation and hate speech. And that is what Myanmar has been drowning in. And Facebook's system failed them at every stage. First, their AI didn't work because Facebook's technology isn't compatible with Myanmar's language fonts, which, you know, not great, but fine. That just meant that they badly needed Burmese people to flag content for them. But to do that, it really might have helped if things like their community standards and reporting systems had been in Burmese which they weren't until late 2015, which isn't great in a country where almost no one speaks English. Just imagine if Facebook, Facebook's interface here was in Burmese. You would have no way of knowing which button did what. In fact, that's not even Facebook's interface. That's just a list of dinosaurs ranked from most to least fuckable. <laughs> and by the way, Stegosaurus is way too far down on that list. Stegosaurus is basically the wish bear of dinosaurs. Seriously. That bear can get it. <laughs> but 